It's biology with Mr. B. Biology with Mr. B. That's me. Hello, year 12. Ooh, go back. So uh, this lesson, this YouTube lesson is all about heart action. So hopefully you're coming into this knowing at the very least how to label a heart with the four main blood vessels, the four main chambers and the four main valves. If you can do that, then you're ready. So let's do some heart action. Uh, the spec point is, if you look at the front, it's 3.1.2. And then G, it's how heart action is initiated and coordinated, including the roles of the SAN, AVN, Perkine tissue, or bikini tissue is how I like to pronounce it. It always makes me remember it. And the what's known as the myogenic nature of cardiac muscle, which I, I promise is actually really quite cool. So first thing just to read and, and think about. So between 1958, the very first pacemaker operation, and 2009, St. George Hospital in London has, uh, well, not St. George, across the, across the country, there's been 500,000 operations. And with a population of 70 million, 500,000 in the space of 51 years, that's not a lot, is it? It's quite a low amount. It's quite, sounds quite good. So why don't people need to be fitted with a pacemaker? I haven't got a pacemaker. Why not? Why is mine keeping pace? Because all those 500,000 operations, those artificial pacemakers were fit because the natural pacemaker was no longer functioning. We all have a natural pacemaker. And it's not your brain. It's nothing to do with your brain, your natural pacemaker. It's the cardiac muscle, the heart muscle itself. Cardiac muscle is incredibly special. When you do, we do about muscles in year 13, we learn three main types, uh, skeletal, smooth, and cardiac. Cardiac structurally and functionally is different to the others because it is able to actually transmit electrical impulses all the way through. And that electrical impulse, which can travel along the cardiac muscle, causing the muscle to contract, originates in the cardiac muscle itself. So although your brain has a very active role in changing the heart rate, increasing, decreasing, depending on need, you don't need a brain for the heart to contract. And I'm hoping this uh, YouTube video does it, does it justice. This is just a YouTube video looking at cardiac tissue in a lab. So these will be made from stem cells. I don't particularly care about my bedtime device. Thank you for the advert. That's great timing. Just mute that. So they are beating cardiac cells. Nothing is telling it to beat, nothing is, nothing's going on. They are just cells in a nutrient-rich medium so they have enough glucose and have enough oxygen to respire. That is what cardiac cells naturally do. All the brain is for is to maybe increase or decrease that pace. But the heart should naturally beat and we call it the myogenic nature. Cardiac muscle is myogenic because the electrical impulse which stimulates the muscle and causes it to contract actually originates in the tissue itself rather than being conducted along your nerves. How cool is that? So yeah, if you, if you do watch like stem cell things on YouTube, you might be able to see like uh, where they've actually grown full hearts for not quite yet in humans, but full hearts for like in rats and things. And you'll see this entire heart outside the body beating. No nervous control. It's just within the correct nutrient-rich environment to allow it to respire. So in case you are interested, and this is certainly we absolutely are doing year 13, so those other two types of muscles, skeletal and smooth, cannot initiate their own impulse. In order for them to contract, they have to be told to via an electrical impulse conducting along a neuron. So they're said to be neurogenic, whereas cardiac tissue is myogenic. My, does it myself. Okay, 
Quiz time! I've got three rounds to my quiz. Um, usually we'd see who'd win, but we, let's just pretend. I, I don't know. Who would win out of the, all the year 12s? Mm, Freddie. I'm going for Freddie Taylor. Freddie's going to win this. Uh, so this is going to test your biology, your maths and your e English? Um, yeah, maybe not your English skills. You're just having to think about letters. I'm hopeful you know your letters. My daughter knows her letters. So if you're struggling, we, we have issues. Um, so you're going to convert from numbers to letters. So I'm going to give you three statements, each of which have a numerical answer. And that and numerical answer corresponds to a letter of the alphabet. For example, if, if the answer was six, then you would go to the sixth letter of the alphabet, which is F. So your challenge is to convert from numbers to letters. So feel free to pause my screen while you're thinking. Go. Okay, I'm going to go over the answer now. So if you're still working, pause me. Carbon. How many atoms of glucose? C6. H12. So add them together is 18 plus 1 is 19. The 19th letter in the alphabet is S for sandwich. Number two, how many nuclear divisions are in mitosis? How many times does the nucleus divide in mitosis? One time. So the answer is A for apple. There you go. Uh, last one, atrium in the mammalian heart times by seven. How many atria are there? It's the left atrium and the right atrium. So there's two atrium times by seven is 14. And the 14th letter is N for nuggets. Yeah, all food related. So that should have spelled S A N, the S A N. That's your pacemaker, boys and girls. The S A N, Sino Atrio Node. That's your pacemaker. So it is the structure responsible for the origin of that electrical impulse that travels around the my the myogenic tissue. It is found in the right atrium, so top left hand side of a page, very near to the point where the vena cava actually connects to the right atrium. So really is, if you're looking at the heart diagram on a page, it is top left, like where the vena cava meets with the right atrium, but it's still very much inside the right atrium. You may remember GCC question where you were asked to label where the pacemaker of the heart was. You didn't call it the SEN and GCSE, but you had to label it where it was, and you just had to put an X somewhere in that right atrium. The same is absolutely fine for A level in the right atrial wall. The SEN is responsible for the initiation of the, on average, 70 heartbeats uh, that occur per minute at rest. And because of the SEN, we get the very first part of our cardiac cycle. Now this pie chart and the cardiac cycle that it represents is something we're going to look at in a bit more detail in, in a future lesson. That's probably actually the one where I see you in the webinar next week. Um, but I just want to use, because I'm going to be using the words early, so I'm going to show you it now. The, when the SAN uh, stimulates um, the wave of excitation, the electrical impulse, that electrical impulse causes the, the muscle to contract, the cardiac muscle to contract. And because it starts in the atrium, well, what's going to contract first? The atrium is going to contract first. We call atrial contraction systole or atrial systole. Systole is the general word we use for contraction. So atrial systole is a contraction of the muscles in the walls of the right and the left atria because they do contract at the same time. So to think about them. I'm going to give you a description of atrial systole on the next on the next, my next, next slide. Where must the electrical impulse have to be conducted to allow it to happen? Bearing in mind it's found, the SEN, the origin of the electrical impulse, is found in the right atrium near where the vena cava connects. So where must the electrical impulse be travelling in order for the atrial systole, this contraction, to occur? So again, just pause me if, if you're reading, but I'm gonna I'm gonna keep talking now. So if atrial systole 
is contracting both the right and left atrium at the same times, allowing the atria to pump, basically pump their blood into the right and left ventricles, so moving the blood from atria to ventricles, pushing open those atrioventricular bicuspid tricuspid valves. It has to mean that the impulse or that's origin the SEN, the right atrium, it has to travel from the right atrium all the way along that atrium to the left atrium. And that will allow both right and left atrium to contract at roughly the same time. Because it's an electrical impulse, it's a very, very quick spread. So they will contract at roughly exactly the same time. And we absolutely do call this the wave of excitation. The SAN stimulates an electrical impulse and it spreads from the right all the way along the atrial wall to the left atrium and we refer to that as the wave of excitation. Now this is a bit year 13 extra so you're welcome just to fast forward this bit if it's just no I'll save that for next year. Just a little bit about the structure of the cardiac muscle that allows that wave of excitation to actually uh, spread. Cardiac muscle cells are composed of intercalated discs. And in the middle of each of those discs, there's a very area of low resistance called a gap junction. Because it's low resistance, it allows the electrical impulse to quickly pass from the SCN and to each adjacent cardiac muscle cell to the next, to the next, to the next, and so on. So these discs are all beautifully connected and they've all got this little bit in the middle called a gap junction, very little resistance, allowing the electrical impulse to flow really quickly. Skeletal muscle, smooth muscle, don't have that, which is why they can't generate, they, they can't sort of do their own uh, electrical impulse. They've got to be told to by, they're, they're neurogenic, got to be told to by the nerves. Anyway, second part of my quiz. So this is called You Do The Math. So three statements will appear, and they will have a numerical answer. Uh, by considering the mathematical signs between the statements, calculate the final answer. Uh, don't buzz in. Please, no one buzz me. That'd be weird. Um, but yeah, but please try and calculate the final answer. So uh, number of carbon, amount of carbon mass in the glucose, divided by different amino acids in the genetic code, divided by carbon atoms in ribose. So pause me as you work this out. Okay, number of carbon atoms in glucose. There is six. Different amino acids in the genetic code. There is 20. Number of carbon atoms in ribose. There is five. It's a pentose sugar. So six divided by 20 divided by five. You get 0 0.06. That is the time it takes this is a diagram that I have already forwarded to you in the email containing this YouTube link. This, that is the time it takes for the wave of excitation to spread from the sinoatrial node across to the walls of the left atrium, 0.06 seconds. That's why both the right and left atrium contract at, let's face it, the same time, 0.06 seconds. That's just so close isn't it it's virtually exactly the same time it's because they're contracting and they'll force because they'll contract again we're going to deal with things like pressure and valves and why this happens but if these guys are contracting you can imagine it's going to increase the pressure inside the atria forcing the blood out of the atria it will open the valves and the blood will go into the ventricles okay so just this just a bit of exam technique if you are wanting to be talking about these conductions of impulses, remember your English cricket board. Remember your ECB. Got to mention electrical impulse. Got to mention contraction of heart muscle. And you've got to mention the blood movement. How is the blood moving? So if I had an SAN version, it would probably look like this. So we start the blue bit. We are starting with the... Yeah, the what? The E, the electrical impulse. The SEN initiates the heartbeat and the wave of excitation spreads across the walls of the right and left atria. C, the contraction of heart muscle. That causes the right and left atrium to contract. My bit in black is about valves. I guess you could call this the ECVB, 
The pressure in the atria increases, forcing tricuspid and bicuspid, or atrioventricular valves to open. As a result, B, blood flow. Blood flows into the blood right and left ventricles during atrial systole. That, that sentence, if you look at the, the, other, the other sort of worksheets that I, I sent across other than the diagram, which is going to be the thing you're going to fill in after this video, um, you'll see that at the top. I've already done this atrial systole, the start bit for you. Your job's going to be going to do the rest of it. So I have a, another numbers to letters round. And this will help us with our next bit. Our atria have just contracted. We need to do something else. So how many peptide bonds found in a dipeptide? How many sex chromosomes are in humans? Minus one. What is the average resting heart rate? Divided by five. So pause me if you're thinking. Okay, a dipeptide. There will be one peptide bond. If there's two, that's, that's two amino acids joined together, isn't it? Dipeptide, so one peptide bond. Sex chromosome pair in humans? Minus one. So sex chromosome pair is was the 23rd pair, so you're looking for the 22nd. And the average resting heart rate, I think it said 70, so 70 divided by 5. Um, 70 divided by 5, 14. So number 1, that would be A. 22 would be V. And 14 would be N. We are looking for the, we're looking for the uh, acronym. AVN, A -V -N, which stands for the atrioventricular node. So we've had the SAN, sinoatrial node, found in the atrium, right atrium. And this one, we've got the atrioventricular node. Wonder where that might be? Atrioventricular. Maybe between the atrium and ventricle. So these two nodes are involved in the conduction of the electrical impulse through the heart. So predict, I predict the full name of this conducting tissue structure. I've probably already given you that, haven't I? But still, look at the diagram that I attached to you. Is that where you would have expected the impulse to pass to next? Is the AVN located? it? Is that where you would have expected this electrical impulse to go? The SEN has moved this wave of excitation all the way across both, both walls of the atria. Yet this, the entirety of that wave of excitation goes to the AVN next. It doesn't go anywhere else, just the AVN. Is that normal? Is there a reason? So do look at that diagram, do think about it. But So pause me, but I'm moving on. So the walls of the atrioventricular, the walls between the atrium and the ventricle are composed of non-conducting tissue. It's not the same cardiac tissue with those intercalated discs. It's non-conducting. So the electrical impulse can't just go straight from the right, vent right atrium to the right ventricle. Can't just keep going downwards. The only place along that gap I say gap. The only place between like the connection between the atrium and ventricle that has conducting tissue is the AVN, the little node in that septum, in the in the in the gap, in the, in the uh, middle bit between the left and right uh, walls. Just so left and right walls, left and right sides of the heart. The AVN is the only bit that can conduct. So the entirety of the wave of excitation that was going along the atria. They all, it, it goes completely to the AVN. So again, go back to your diagram and look at the timings. It took 0 0.06 seconds for the wave of excitation to get all the way across to the left atrial wall. So now look at the timings around the AVN. What appears to be happening? Why might that be the case? So do think about that. But again, pause me, but I'm moving on. Wait for it. Literally, that is what is happening. The impulse is being delayed at the atrioventricular node. So it takes 0. Oh, see, calculate, let's calculate the delay. It takes 0. 0.04 seconds for that wave of excitation to reach 
the atrioventricular node here, labeled B. Yet it takes 0.12 seconds for that to get just below it for it to start moving again along the septum. So there is a delay there of 0.08 seconds. That might not seem like a lot, that might not seem like a teeny amount of time, but I assure you that is absolutely essential for your heart to work. So a little quick question. So if we talk about the cardiac cycle, it's something we're going to do later, and I told you atrial systole's contraction of the atrium. So after that delay of the impulse at the AVN, what's going to happen after? It's going to be ventricular systole. The ventricles are now going to contract. Because look, the wave of excitation picks up again here. And it's now in the ventricles. So it's going to be the ventricles contracting next. So, this hopefully, this analogy might be hope, um, helpful in trying to understand why we have this 0 0.08 second delay at the AVN. When the atrium contracts, all the blood for the atrium will go into the ventricle. But if the ventricle contracts at more or less the same time, well, it won't be full. The ventricle won't be full yet. It won't be able to. Uh, it won't be able to give a huge amount of blood to the arteries leaving. But with that little extra delay, it allows the atria to fully empty all its blood, and the ventricle to fully fill. Which means when the heart contracts you have a much more efficient release of blood into the artery. So it's, it's not a case of like, you know, if, if say you didn't have this gap, you still like release the same amount of blood, but you'd have, be having to pump your heart a lot more often. So from an energy efficiency point of view, the AVN and that delay, it just ensures that the ventricles are completely full with blood before the ventricles contract. So every contraction, every time your ventricles contract, every time the blood goes through the arteries, you've got the maximum amount of blood possible. And therefore making that contraction very efficient. Okay, so a question could be, briefly describe the events that occur during ventricular systole, include the names of any blood vessels directly involved. So again, pause me, give it a go. I'm going to go through it now. So ventricular systole is when the right and left ventricles pump together, which forces the blood through the semilunar valves, I guess we could say that, and into the pulmonary artery and the aorta artery. That's ventricular systole. So think about the right and left ventricles always pump together and they force the blood into those arteries. So go back to your diagram. By specifically thinking about how the ventricles need to contract to be able to pump blood into those arteries, and considering where we last left the impulse, where must the wave of excitation be conducted to next? To put it this way, the ventricles need to contract and God, it's a hamster. Sorry, it's a big squeak. It's my hamster. Um, the ventricles need to contract and force blood to the arteries, which are upwards. The ventricles aren't going to be contracting top down, are they? In order for the blood to move up, the ventricles must contract bottom up. So in order, I'll, I'll go back to the diagram in a second and, and really talk you through this. And I'll talk you through the entire thing at the end. But in order to pump the blood upwards into the artery, the ventricles have to contract bottom up. And that means the impulse needs to be conducted from the AVN down the septum to the base, the apex, the base of the heart. And that's achieved by conduction along the fibres called Purkini fibres. If you do sports studies, they'll call them Purkinje fibres with a J. You will also see these uh, fibres known as the bundles of Hiss, 
It's all the same thing, I promise you. At least it is at A level. Final catchphrase. Stay we see. Noise cats make when it's happy. It's purr. And if you do that bit of math, you should get the answer of nine. But replace the no with a K, you get your pecain fibres. Pekini fibres, I pronounce them. So these pecain fibres conduct the impulse from the AVN to the ventricles. So I'm going to get to that in a second. That is uh, to do with the, the task that you're going to do for me, because we're, we're at the end now. So I've, this is the task you're going to do for me. But what I want to show folks on now is my diagram. So I just want to talk you through the entire process as simply as I can. The wave of excitation originates at the sinoatrial node here, what we've labelled as A. And that wave of excitation spreads along the cardiac tissue and along from the right atrium and all the way along to the left atrium. And the right and left atrium will contract at virtually the same time and force the blood, because again, this is at the top right, it will force the blood downwards through the bicuspid tricuspid valves and into the ventricles below. The wave of excitation cannot get through this wall here, this wall here, all the way across, sort of the, the gap between the atrium and ventricular walls, it is non-conducting tissue. The only place where it is conducting is this bit here in the middle, which is the AVN, the atrioventricular node. So the wave of excitation goes along both atria and ends up at the atrioventricular node, where there's a delay, a small delay of 0.08 seconds. Eventually, the wave of excitation keeps going through and it travels down the septum. Nothing's contracting here, guys. This isn't wall that's contracting. It's only going to be the outside wall that's contracting. This is in the middle. And it travels down for another 0.04 seconds, down pecaine fibres to the apex, to the base of the heart. The wave of excitation then moves upwards, up the ventricle. This bit does contract. So the base of the ventricle contracts first, followed by the top of the ventricle. It's only a difference of 0.02 seconds, but it's still a difference. So the base contracts first, and the top of the ventricle contracts last. And that will force the blood upwards, up through the semilunar valves, which aren't obviously on here, and up out the arteries at the top. That is your journey. That's also the link to your task now. So using a similar amount of detail as seen in the, in the SEM paragraph, which is on this PowerPoint, on this video, but also on that worksheet, complete the description to include the roles of the structures afterwards. If you don't feel confident with the just generic one, um, there's one that I've labeled as stars, which is just gaps to complete instead. So it is completely your call which one you go for there. I challenge all of you to only use the stars if you feel you have to, but um, if you do need it, it's not, yeah, please do. So when you've had a go, please look at this last part of the video, which is my answer, and compare it, mark it, improve it, whatever you need to do. Okay, here goes. So this is mine. Um, so we've had the, the SEN, the atrio, the atrio, atrial systole at the start, so now we've got this bit. So as the atrioventricular walls are made of non-conducting tissue, the electrical, because again, look what I'm doing, I'm using my, my, I'm talking about conduction first. The electrical impulse passes from the right and left atria to the atrioventricular node, there's a short delay. Whilst the electrical impulse is held at this node too, now I'm talking about contraction, muscles, ECB, remember, English cricket board to allow atrial systole to complete before ventricular, ventricular systole commences. ECB. The electrical impulse is conducted down the intraventricular septum, so down the septum, on the becaine fibres, which then extend up the walls of the ventricles, causes the muscles of the ventricles to contract from the bottom upwards, increasing the pressure, shuts the tricuspid-bicuspid valves and opens the semilunar valves, 
and blood is pumped upwards into the pulmonary and ar artery and aorta during ventricular systole. That's my answer. Last bit before we go, and this links to what we're moving on to. So now I've got my full cardiac cycle written down. We've discussed atrial systole and ventricular systole, how they work. What we haven't discussed is what happens afterwards. Diastole. Diastole is the heart relaxing. The part where it isn't, where neither atrial ventricle are contracting. Do you know when you, when you, you, know, you hear a heartbeat, you hear lub dub? Well, the lub is atrial systole and the dub is ventricular systole. So if you can't hear your heart, that's called diastole or death. I'm going to say diastole. All four chambers of the heart relax and elastic recall also occurs to increase the volume and that allows some blood to flow in from the veins down a pressure gradient. Effectively, before atrial systole, the atrium need to fill up with blood, don't they? So by relaxing, increasing the volume, decreasing pressure, it allows the blood from the veins to flow into the atrial, atria, fill the atria up, ready for it to contract again. Okie dokie. So just, just a reminder, this is the worksheet that you're completing for me. I've done my first bit with the SEN and atrial systole. Um, if you, it just, it's just not coming to you from the top of your head, although I have just gone through the answer, so why would you not be? Um, it was fill in the blanks instead. So feel free to change it, look at it. But thank you very, very much. Um, I'll see you, I'll, well, I'll see 12C on Tuesday, I'll see 12B on Wednesday, and I'll see 12A on Thursday. Have a good one. Bye.